One of the ways we know dinosaurs weren't tail-dragging freaks is due to the complete lack of fossilized tail-drag marks present with any fossil trackway. So, how do we know the dinosaurs displayed to one another when they felt the itch? There is no direct evidence of the act of courtship displays. It's all inference based on anatomy and evolutionary history. However, there are six fossil track sites found in Colorado and Canada that just might reveal the first and only of its kind, overturning that old way of thinking. While I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. There are two major types of physical evidence left behind by living things in the fossil record body fossils, and trace fossils. Body fossils are, as the name suggests, bits from the body. So, bones, internal structures, and soft tissues. Body fossils are great and all, but they mostly never show you how these animals lived, only what they looked like on the inside. A rare few body fossil specimens preserve these soft tissues enough to reveal their true life appearance. Trace fossils, on the other hand, offer a completely different window to the paleontologist. Fossilized behavior. Well, not literally fossilized behavior, but the remains of behavior. Footprints, body prints, skin impressions, burrows, and more. The study of fossil footprints, trails, burrows, and the like is called ichnology. Not many people outside of the field know much of it because it doesn't really result in giant gnarly skeletons of prehistoric monsters. Instead, the specimens themselves are simple impressions of feet and hands left in mud. It's what these impressions mean that make them special, as special as the bones. Fossil traces have been known to humans as long as bones have, with many cultures heralding theropod dinosaur footprints as those of giant mythological animals of all types. Trackways that show plodding, walking, running, hopping, and all sorts of locomotion of basically every single animal group to ever live have been found. For the ever-present topic of the dinosaurs, burrows made by tiny herbivores have been found as well as nests and nesting grounds for duckbills, sauropods, and parrot dinosaurs. But in all of this, no one has ever found impressions left by dinosaurs courting one another. For the longest time, many experts weren't even sure what something like that would look like. That was until just such a holy grail site was found. In fact, not just one, but six. There are six fossil track sites that preserve weird scratches in the rock. Five are located in Colorado, and one is in Canada. Let's first take a look at those in Colorado. All of them are found etched into the surface of an outcrop that is eroding from a unit of rock called the Dakota Sandstone. This rock unit is considered a group of formations in some places, but just a single formation in sites outcropping in Nebraska, Iowa, Southwest Utah, Kansas, and the Four Corners region. It dates to the Albion to Cenomanian stages of the Cretaceous, some 103 to 97 million years ago. I want to first talk about the scratches found at an especially important and relatively famous fossil track site that used to be close to home for me, Dinosaur Ridge. Dinosaur Ridge West of Denver, right outside of the town of Morrison, from which the mighty Jurassic Morrison Formation gets its name, is a hogback showing two sides of the same coin. The west side of this ridge showcases eroding outcrops of the Morrison Formation, where paleontologists Arthur Lakes and off Neil Charles Marsh discovered all sorts of Jurassic giants in the late 1800s. The east side of the ridge houses outcrops of the Cretaceous Dakota Sandstone, but it was not until a bunch of construction workers were building Alameda Parkway in 1937 that fossils were actually found on this side of the ridge. 
As a perfect complement to the bony Jurassic side of the ridge, this more recently excavated east side contained hundreds of fossil footprints from various dinosaur groups that were trudging around Colorado during the beginning of the late Cretaceous. Ornithopods like Eulambia, giant theropods like Acrocanthosaurus, ostrich dinosaurs like Archonsaurus, and even non-dinosaurian crocodilians. For the longest time, the Dinosaur Ridge track site was known to contain some non-footprint marks. Obviously, there are ripple marks left in what used to be the mud at the bottom of mangrove swamps, and there are burrows and twig marks. But there are also a series of marks of roughly the same anatomy or morphology preserved in a section of the site that have given researchers headaches. These are those marks. They sort of look like scratch marks made into the ground. Historically, these were regarded as simply enigmatic marks that could have been made by anything. However, a massive multinational team of ichnologists were forced to come back to these fossil marks due to the discovery of the same marks in rocks from a similar time in four other fossil track sites in Colorado. They published their work in scientific reports in 2015. Before I get to the actual marks, let's take a quick look at the other sites. Rubidoux Creek The next fossil track site was discovered out near Rubidoux Creek in Delta County, Colorado. This site preserved eight scrapes and some bits of a theropod dinosaur footprint. The scrapes don't look like much, but they definitely look like something made by an animal with large, sharp claws. You can see where the toes or fingers pierced the soil and were then dragged backwards through the sediment. Club Gulch this western Colorado site is the biggest of them all. It's 50 meters by 15 meters and contains 60 scrape marks. The author team hypothesizes the site represents what was once a crevasse splay or overbank deposit. A crevasse splay occurs when a river breaks through the sides of the sediment that contain it, emptying out onto a floodplain, creating what one might characterize as a very shallow downstream lake but I'm sure I'm upsetting the geomorphologists or groundwater people by saying that. These can be small or so large that they cover up giant dinosaur remains with sediment and water to begin the fossilization process. There seems to be some fossil footprints at this track site as well, but not much mention is made of them. Duncan Road Site the Duncan Road track site is 20 kilometers east of the Rubidoux Creek site and contains only three scrapes. These were the four initial track sites used by the 2015 author team to determine that these things were distinct from every single fossil impression ever found, so they gave it a name, Austinichnus bilobatus, meaning two-lobed display trace. You see, because fossil footprints or marks can pretty much never be attributed directly to an extinct species that made them, they need to be organized. The same system used to organize species and genera is used for fossil traces. The researchers compared these Austinichnus bilobatus traces to those made by birds, which scrape the ground with their feet during mating rituals, unsurprisingly called nest scrape display. It's to show the females that the male knows how to make a nest, or as just a physical emphasis of power, I'm big and sexy sort of thing. The researchers couldn't go into too much detail on the identification of the animals that made these marks because that would be pure speculation. But since they are made only by birds today, and since they ruled out their origins as animals digging for resources, they can be tentatively referred to giant theropod dinosaurs. The only giant theropod dinosaurs around at the time and place these marks were made were allosaurs like Acrocanthosaurus, but of course it would be impossible to prove it was Acrocanthosaurus itself that made them, unless a foot skeleton was found inside the scrapes. A few years later, in 2018, another team of fossil footprint fanatics would go on to publish two more fossil sites containing these weird foot scrape fossils. Club Gulch West This site is, as the name suggests, just a little bit west of the Club Gulch site and contains around 28 scrape fossils. This site is 70 meters long and 2 meters wide. W2 Site 
Grand Cache, Alberta, Canada, hosts another fossil track site dating to the end of the early Cretaceous of the Gates Formation. This site has been known for a while, with publications on it dating to the late 1990s and early 2000s. However, like Dinosaur Ridge, the weird scrapes had no other fossil specimens to compare and contrast with. The 2018 research team refound the scrape marks in Canada and found they matched the scrapes in Colorado near perfectly, so they tentatively referred them to the same Austinicness by Lobatus track type. So, now we have an idea of what these tracks are, but what do they mean? Well, the various researchers on this case have hypothesized that these were left by giant theropod dinosaurs doing a little dance before making a little love. Their evidence is that there are a bunch of their living relatives that do the same behavior. No eggshells, nests, burrows, or carcasses were found in the rocks the prints were preserved in, meaning digging for food, digging for actual nest making, or colonial living, digging for water, digging to hide food, or digging to mark territory could all be ruled out. This would make these tracks the very first and also the oldest evidence of this behavior. An interesting fact about these prints is that actual footprints are quite rare in and around the marks. This is because the sand was firmer than the usual sediment that preserves dinosaur footprints. The authors think this may mean the animals sought out hard substrates in which to do their nest scraping displays. Therefore, the only reason they were preserved is because the animals that made them were enormous and they dug vigorously into hard sediments that kept the shape long enough to become lithified. A dancing dinosaur seems like a silly idea, but we see dancing dinosaurs all the time, living with us today. In fact, the mating dance concept has even made its way into educational programming. Apple's prehistoric planet showcases a male Carnotaurus trying in vain to attract a female by doing a swaying, twirling, bobbing dance while he flaps his blue arms in coordinated arcs. This scene doesn't technically show the Carnotaurus do the nest scrape display, but the fossil evidence does prove that even giant dinosaurs were doing some form of silly physical activity to show that they were respectable mates. As silly as the Carnotaurus dance may seem, it aligns with reality far more than you might think. Oh, also this video is inspired by an entry in Dr. Dean Lomax's book, Locked in Time. Check it out when you get a chance. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.